All right, now, everybody. Quiet, listen to me. We're going to start a show. Now, some of you people have been with me before. You know it's going to be a tough crime. But we're going to have a show. Well, hello all. It is our Friday show, and it is great to have you all with us. I am excited. Mark here with the magnificent Albert, Albert who you. is the commissioner of sports. We will check in on the NFL playoffs with him in just minutes. Kim. Kim, how are you? Fresh off of solo hosting this Nikki Maduro show. They regularly do the Nikki Maduro show without Nikki Maduro, and that is a very bold move. I think... Uh, and you do a good job, Kim. What? I was actually watching this morning, yeah. thinking Kim could break off. She could do a spinoff. You know how no. Frasier spun off from Cheers? Are you familiar with the spinoff concept? Yeah, I don't want to spin off. Well, you could spin off from this show. You could spin no. off. Are you you trying to get rid of me? Come on. Uh, no, I'm, you, you, know, you could still do both. I'm just suggesting it, you know. Anyway. You it, are a sucker. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Ooh, it's a wild idea. Uh, I just I'm might just work. Saying it, I'm throwing it out there. I won't be hurt if you want to spin off a little bit. Hola Marco says, just give me the truth. What up? What up, truth? Big shout out. Yeah. Let's get this baby on, baby. I'm, I'm way into it. I'm jacked up on about five cups of Coachella Valley coffee. I'm drinking Woo! my... What I like to do, let me tell you a little... Mark Thompson shows secret. I get that cup of joe, and it's already strong because I like my my coffee strong and dark. Mm-hmm. Then I add two shots of espresso to it. What? Yeah. <laughs> this is some high test, baby. I'm throwing <laughs> it right down. It's like jet fuel. I am telling you what. I am ready. I'd be willing to bet my lunch that there's alcohol involved. <laughs> there's no alcohol involved. Yeah. It will sound as though there's alcohol involved, but that's just my general aspect. Mm -hmm. But there is no alcohol involved, but I recommend it. Isn't anybody but a weed? And there's no weed involved, although I do recommend that too. I mean, if you can handle it responsibly. Um, <laughs> the... No, no, Becky. Kim, uh, Nikki is fine. Nikki was just off today. So yeah, no, she's working in the big city. She's she working on KCBS. Well. That's right. News and traffic every traffic four minutes. Together. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Um, I thought you just did the news and traffic. Yes, we do it. We do it a lot. We do it a lot. All right, good for her. I, I love Nikki. I think she does a great job. I love actually. I'll, I, I watch that show and I think that eh, parts of that show better than mine. To be perfectly honest. Oh no. <laughs> Wow. What? Uh, I know. I'm sorry. I'm just being honest. Both are Albert, good. Both um, are I must turn before we have a lot to do today. Friday is a great show, of course. Albert Curates, Friday Fabulous Florida. We'll do that bottom of the hour. We're joined by former producer John Daly, who still in his fabulousness does the After Party Live with Kim. Mm -hmm. uh, Michael Shore will join us top of the second hour to talk politics. We'll talk Trump. We'll talk New Hampshire. He was in Iowa, as you know. You've seen him on MSNBC. You've... Um, uh, heard him on AP radio. He's been all over the, he, he's turning into kind of a media darling. He goes to all those Trump rallies. There's and never been anything he, like this. Yeah, he is quite uh, the media presence. He will join us uh, to begin the second hour. And of course, the culture blaster, Michael Snyder, will uh, join bottom of the second hour with stuff to watch. Now, uh, all right, so I hate to do this, but uh, I have to do it. So I'm, I, I'm going to do it. The Mark Thompson Show. I need, to I need to ask Albert something. What happened, and I'm responding to a, an email, Albert. What happened to the podcast yesterday? It what? did not go up, and that is cleanly your responsibility, Albert. What is the uh, uh, what is your explanation? I was fortunate. Everyone I worked <laughs> with made me better at my yeah, job. Yeah, well, that might be true for you, Brian Williams. But uh, here, everyone around me is not making me better at my job. Albert, what? Why didn't the podcast go up yesterday? First, let me preface why it are you by yelling? Yeah, let, let me preface it my by bad. saying, "My bad. I'm sorry." <laughs> but I did. 
It's funny because it's it, it's so quick, and that's usually the first thing I do, uh, cutting the audio because it's the easiest. Like uh, doing the breakout videos takes takes a while to to get it all nice and cinched up, and adding a the end of video element. If you ever make it to the end of those videos, but yeah, at the end, uh, I uploaded the podcast, and I never press publish. Actually, it was just sitting there. Uh -oh. Yeah. So the file was sitting there, and I didn't press publish. So when well, I went I'd like to spread the blame around, though, if I uh -oh. might. Because I was fortunate. Everyone I worked oh. with made me better at my well, job. Well, here is everyone I work with. You're looking at them. There is Kim take as well. The criticism off of me by celebrating Gail Guthrie. How, How about, about Gail Guthrie <laughs> with a happy Friday Fabulous Florida shout out? Big shout out. She throws us twenty dollars in the super chat. Thank you. I got my Niners shirt on. She said. Uh, go Niners. Kelly Malloy with a 10 spot. What up, Kelly? Big shout out. Thank you, Kelly, for the uh, super sticker. Thank you to everybody who supports this show. We are crowdfunded. Patreon and PayPal is available to you at themarkthompsonshow.com. You just click on the Patreon or PayPal link and you can actually become part of the community that supports this show. So we really need you to stay on the air if you want to call it you know, on the air. But back to Kim. I've told oh. uh, Kim... <laughs> That the one thing she needs to do when I'm not here. I was fortunate. Is, Everyone uh, I worked with made me better at my job. Tell Albert, remind him, because he's got a lot of stuff going on. Remind yeah. him the podcast. Just throw it in. Remember, so we're going to break these videos out and the podcast. You never told me that. Yeah, I did. I told you oh, this. Oh, Lord. I've This is, oh, my God. All Again right. with this, sweetheart. Did you really just do that? I just. Uh, <laughs> I was fortunate. <laughs> Everyone uh, I worked with yeah. made me better at my job. <sighs> I don't know. Well, I'm uh, glad we've worked through this. I blame you. See, I mean, I uh, blame me how? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I just you blame see, that's you. just right. Yeah, you're catching on, but you haven't really it. developed the. Um... <laughs> Albert, I'd like a sincere apology to and the I wanted audience. I want to apologize I... to the Asian community. Let me get the American apology community. music. <laughs> Albert, you have to look at the camera and be sincere in apologizing for not getting the podcast up yesterday. My bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's not really what I was looking for. Yeah, for you right. podcast listeners out there, I'm sorry. It, it's up now, so you have some uh, some extra content for the weekend. So. Oh, that's really good. Yeah. Turn that frown upside down, baby. There. The Mark Thompson Show. All right. There's a lot going on, and we'll get to it. It's not all politics at all. Something that... I have to tell you, I just am kind of surprised by. It. I'm not one of these guys, as you know, is into true crime, or you know, even as I, we love our Josh Mankowitz, we love our Dateline people, we love our Courtney, who is way into true crime. Who, if you're just joining us, is my my other half, is way into it. I'm not, but I do know the Lacey Peterson case and the Scott Peterson yeah. case, and I know that there were all kinds of questions around it, and you know, now they're re. Opening this case potentially because the Innocence Project has picked that, uh, picked up the Scott well, Peterson case. They're not necessarily opening reopening the case, but I can say that you know he was convicted twenty years ago of murdering his then pregnant wife Lacey, um, and now the Los Angeles Innocence Project is working with Peterson, investigating to try to maybe see if there's anything that can prove that he was innocent. I see. So he has claimed this whole time he didn't do it. You know, he's unjustly accused, what have you. Um, the Los Angeles Innocence Project says only this. It is representing Scott Peterson and investigating his claim of actual innocence. So that's where we are right now. Uh, whether they'll find something or not remains to be seen, but they are looking into it. It's interesting because I would think that the Scott Peterson case... Mm -hmm just knowing sort of the basic X's and O's of it. Kind of bad for the Innocence Project brand. Don't you associate the Innocence Project with freeing people who've been incarcerated for 20 years or whatever, wrongly accused sure. and wrongly convicted? I mean, that's what I associate. When I see the Innocence yeah. Project involved in something, I go, wow, their investigators, lawyers, et cetera, looked at these facts and see mm -hmm. that this person is likely wrongly incarcerated. Right. I mean, in the case of Scott Peterson, is there anybody who thinks that he was wrongly incarcerated for he the, does? These... And I'm sure there are other people that <laughs> do <does>. too. <laughs> he's he's saying that. 
for those of I meant, us, I meant beyond him. <laughs> you meant everybody else. Like, you know. But for Thank those you. Of, Thank for you. Those of us that re- were around and reporting on, <laughs> on that case, even before he was arrested, right? When she was still missing, uh, I was reporting on th- this case. My sister was a TV reporter in Chico, and she had interviewed him in person several times when his wife was still missing. Um, and so those of us that were there at that time and saw this whole thing play out, saw how he reacted to certain things and the reactions just didn't quite fit uh, normal. Right. Plus all the evidence, plus everything else, you would think to yourself, there's no way. This guy is guilty as sin, right? Right. And I don't buy it for a second. However. However. Let's say they do uncover something. And I'm not talking about... uh, discrepancy in you know court procedures that is just kind of a, a you know red tape or whatever discrepancies a ding word yeah go ahead i'm talking like real evidence that shows that someone else killed her or whatever say, just say that happened that would be a huge case for them that would be international headlines for them so i mean does it hurt their brand? Not if they're successful. Oh, my God. Uh, it, it, that is the most, uh, 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 as usual, Kim, that is the most extreme hypothetical. If they well, find something, this is one of the most invest. This is one of the most investigated, examined cases yeah. in the last 20 years. That's You're true. suggesting if they find, of course, if they find something. Right. I mean, it's like, you know, I'm telling you, the dude is guilty with a G. Okay, this is crazy straightforward. The Innocence Project can't find anything either. Either doesn't that put it to bed? And finally, we can just walk away from this thing. Isn't it already put to bed? Was my point? It's crazy. It's It's to bed already. Why are you yelling? It is a massive bed, and it's been put there. And I don't understand why the Innocence Project is even involved in this. Why are you yelling? Peterson's lawyers, both current and former, say. This new effort might fo- focus on a burglary that happened near that family's home. They lived in uh-huh. Modesto at the time okay. uh, that she disappeared. And so if they focus on that and look at that, maybe I would think that has been examined ad nauseum, but maybe not. And so maybe they find something uh, of interest there. So, hey, let them look into it. Whatever. I mean, I, I still think the guy's a weirdo, but that's fine. Well, you can be a weirdo. There's nothing yeah. wrong with that. But the, the you know. The idea somehow that you're. Uh, he called his mistress from his wife's funeral service after the funeral service. My God. I mean, what? Yeah. And he didn't realize that she already knew exactly where he was. And he's trying to play it off like, I miss you, babe. Come on. Yeah. No. Oh, my God. I mean, yeah. it's just, it's crazy. What the hell is going on in the United Thank States you. of America? Ron Owens gets it. Deidre from Lozica. You know, Lozica is my favorite concrete. If you need concrete, what better? When I want to put somebody in concrete, I put them in <laughs> Lozica concrete. That's all I'm trying to say. But what? Her body washed up at Point Isabel in the El Cerrito, Richmond area. I was home that day, Deidre mm-hmm. says. Yeah. And the helicopter activity was off the charts, I'll bet. I mean, I can only imagine when the, sadly, that body washed up. Yep. But um, I read somewhere that uh, this is from Jay Abrams that this is the L.A. Innocence Project, which is right. not associated with the regular Innocence Project. And this is a way to slander the original Innocence Project. Oh, oh well, it worked. It, it is yeah. the, the L.A. Innocence Project. You are correct about that. I don't know I, about the slander plan, but maybe, yeah. I, yeah. I don't know about the rest of it, but yeah. Uh, meanwhile, Candace is uh, one of my new... She's my new favorite Candace. Candace works. Big shout out. Big shout out. Thank you for a 20 in the super sticker department. Super stickers and super chats, we appreciate. By the way, this show will be demonetized today because we're talking about the Lacey Peterson thing, and that involves uh, murder, and murder right. gets you what? demonetized. So we murder keep all demonetized. We keep all the super sticker and super chat uh, donations, though. So thank you very much for those. So I really appreciate it on a day that I know will be demonetized. Um, is there DNA evidence against him? I don't think so. I mean, I. I, I I'm unclear what the list of evidence is. Maybe uh, Kim knows more. And when Courtney comes in on Monday, maybe we'll yeah. discuss this further. I but, think um, there was bleach in the kitchen and evidence of something in the car. But as far as DNA evidence, that a lot of things were degraded because they'd been in the San Francisco Bay so long. 
This is the word from Randy. If there's evidence to change the outcome of the trial, bring it on, he says. Right. I heard something about DNA testing, which wasn't available at the time of the trial. This is kind of what uh, I think was hinted at by Kim just a moment ago, but also yeah. the um, degradation of that evidence, mm -hmm. DNA evidence, because of the uh, the right. body being in the water so long. Degradation is a ding word. Um, so, uh, dude is a grade A creep. Yeah, again, <laughs> I don't think there's any arguing Hold with on, that. Hold on, Heather. Absolutely. <laughs> Anybody who calls their, even if she died of natural causes, Calling your mistress from the funeral is, uh, I'm just saying, yeah. that's a pretty skeezy move, yeah. definitely. So um, anyway, that's going I'll ding on. So, I'll ding yeah, you for skeezy, skeezy gets dinged. I yeah. don't think so. I don't <laughs> the Mark Thompson We show. can adjudicate that. Maybe the Innocence Project will pick that up. Uh, this is the quasi-Innocence Project, Sis Phineas. <laughs> right. <laughs> Where is Ron Owens these days? Is just give me the truth. Uh, asking that question. Uh, Ron is in Arizona now, and I speak to him frequently, and I love Ron. You know, we're really like family. And uh, I think he's happy, as happy as you can be in, yeah. you know, Arizona. I, I think he'd love to be on the air. I, he feels, I believe, I'm not speaking too much out of school, that, you know, various um, physical limitations have sort of uh, made that impossible. But I will send your regards to him. Wes, thank you for a $5 super sticker and a big shout out, sir. I appreciate it. Um, and we all appreciate it here, um, here on the show. Big shout out. Um, now, uh, and by the way, the um, uh, Mark thought you might be right about, oh, you might be right about Stefanik. Trump's got her stumping with him in New Hampshire. Yeah, she's the uh, Trump choice yeah. for vice president. Um the reason I think it makes sense, we can ask Michael Shore about this. Maybe you can remind me to ask uh, Michael Shore about that, Albert and Kim. I will just reiterate, and it's not a lengthy reiteration at all. It's just the fact that she is a full-throated supporter of Trump. She'll, you know, drink his bathwater, essentially. Ew. And she will uh, represent Trump uh, completely and totally wall-to-wall -wall in every regard that is back him up on anything he says on anything he alleges so that's the kind of person that he's looking for first of all right and she's a, a supplicant she'll put herself at uh in the second position forever she's never looking to overtake trump in any way she's not looking to steal the limelight and so for those reasons she is the perfect vice president very uh much in the general mold of mike pence you know um denise chandler with a super sticker for 20 come big on denise out. what is it it's big super sticker day yeah thank you she is a trump uh i just saw it she's a trump butt kisser gordon andrews says yes uh she certainly is and um it's a uh it's a fact that donald trump continues quite um strongly representing positions that enough people are sparking to that he becomes a real threat. It's a remarkable thing. I mean, you know, I'll say one thing about Trump, and then I kind of want to put the politics to the side. Let's get some news from Kim. I also want to then talk just wall-to-wall -wall politics with a guy who really knows politics. As I said, Michael Shore is coming in top of the next hour. But uh, Donald Trump is... It's remarkable that... He's been able to shake what I think is one of the most damning legal cases against him. And here's, you know, I understand he's at the J6, and J6 is of tremendous significance, right? He was involved in, and you could say the prime mover for, a coup, an actual overthrow of the U.S. government. It was a violent coup attempt, okay? Yep. First, there was a legal coup attempt. Then there was a violent coup attempt, okay? Now, that's not, in my view, the because of the way our brains are organized and the way the American media operates, that's not even the most damning legal case from the standpoint of doing damage to Trump. The most damning legal case, I think, is the one that we're not going to see before he is involved in the general election in a big way and before the November election. And that is the document case. The document case is impossible to swim away from in any kind of rational way. Explain to me rationally, sir, 
why you took so many documents that you filled bathrooms at Mar-a-Lago, ballrooms at Mar-a-Lago, bedrooms at Mar-a-Lago, and closets at Mar-a-Lago with classified U.S. documents. Explain to me and the American public how that in any way is justifiable. Why did you do it? Let's say you declassified them, which is impossible, and you didn't. Still, why did you take them? These documents are so sensitive that they can't be viewed by his legal team or any other party to this case without going to a special secure location. This is the most damning case against Trump, and the mistake made was trying it in Florida, because in Florida, you've got the Trump judge. The Trump-appointed judge has pushed this case down the docket and now has delayed it to the point that he won't have to face the music until after November. So, you know, as president, the whole thing goes away. To me, that is such an easy case to understand. It's that, you know, J6, you can argue, well, it was free speech and blah, blah. You can begin to muddy the water. I mean, we know the truth, but you can muddy the water. In the case of the documents, there is no muddying the water. It is absolutely straightforward. You can tell me, Joe Biden had documents in his garage. Hey, buddy, maybe. And Pence had them too, and maybe we overclassify documents. Great. Right. You had them so many places that you put them in the bathroom shower, and then you put the overflow from that in the rest of the bathroom. It was packed to the gills with classified documents. And then you put them in the ballroom. And then and you put them in your office, and then in the bedroom, and then in the closet. There were so many classified documents at Mar-a-Lago that guests to Mar-a-Lago were literally tripping over them. And then you waved them around and said, I really can't show you this, but. <laughs> exactly. So to me, the fact that he doesn't have to face the music, the legal music on that, is massive. Just one more way in which Donald Trump is delaying. And now, in Georgia, the election interference case may be delayed. So Trump's delay tactics work. You need lawyers, you need loyalists, and he has both to make that happen. Smash the like button like a boss. Smash it with your iron rod. Give us a thumbs up. We do a lot of stuff on this show. If you're just joining us, this is a radio show from KGO Radio in San Francisco that came to YouTube. Kim was a news person on that show. Albert was the producer on that show. And so we came here to YouTube when the radio station went away. And we're really happy to have the community of supporters that we have. Cost you nothing to give us a thumbs up. Smash it Smash with it. your iron rod. Smash that like button. And if you want to join our Community of supporters, we told you how to do it. It's Patreon and PayPal. You can go to themarkthompsonshow.com, uh, click through, and you'll see hot links to Patreon and PayPal. And we're so grateful to everybody who's part of that community. All right, Kim's News. And then Friday, Fabulous Florida, next. Mark Thompson Show. The Mark Thompson Show. On the Mark Thompson Show, I'm Kim McAllister. This report is sponsored by Tenuta Vineyards in lovely Livermore. Congress is averting a government shutdown for now. President Biden today signed a stopgap funding bill to keep the government funded into early March. The bill buys lawmakers time to finish the formal appropriations process, as if they'll ever get that done. <laughs> Cross your fingers. Well, there. this <laughs> and by the way, this this move <laughs> may cost Mike Johnson the leadership. I mean, he may you know he may go the way of Kevin McCarthy because he had to make a deal with Democrats, essentially, to, you know, and this this isn't even much of a deal, but they don't want you dealing with the Democrats at all. Most no. of the hard right wants the government shut down. So, yeah. Anything that, uh, that, that uh, makes a deal, does the business of America while the Democrats are uh, in power, not a good thing, right? Exactly. Do anything to distance themselves from that. Uh, let's talk about snow because they're going to get a lot of snow. Big, big, big snowstorm moving in. Here's a little picture of snow just because, you know, you might have forgotten what it looks like. Um, 
Arctic cold blanketing much of the nation. 95 million Americans under winter weather advisories today. The Northwest coping with freezing rain. The Midwest and the East will see another round of snow. Forecasters say the warmer weather should be on the way for many starting early next week. Commissioner, how will the weather affect these ball games, the big NFL games? The most American thing of all, uh, besides owning a gun, apparently, is uh, watching the NFL. Can you tell me how these games are going to be affected by this weather? I don't think uh, not too bad. I think Buffalo might be getting a little bit of it, but the rest of the games should be pretty good. Like pretty but for freezing weather. cold, though, right? I mean, yeah, they're the, freezing cold. I mean, super freezing cold. Would you say um, like enough to crack a helmet, Mark? Yeah. Yes, exactly. There's a helmet cracked in a Kansas City game. All right. Thank you, Kamish. Uh, newly released deposition video shows former President Trump saying he saved the world from a nuclear holocaust. The video is from Trump's deposition in New York Attorney General Letitia James' fraud lawsuit against him and his company. In this deposition, Trump says he believes there would have been a nuclear holocaust brought on by North Korea if he were not elected. I can't make it up. Sports Illustrated is laying off most of its staff. According to the staff's union, possibly all of the staff has been let go after the iconic sports publication's owner had its publishing license revoked. Sports Illustrated was accused of publishing AI-generated stories under fake names. Busted. Wow. They're not the only publication that's facing trouble, though, and not for the same reason, but apparently financial issues at the LA Times uh, – have impending layoffs there and there may be a staff walkout as they resist what is about to happen at the LA times. You know, this is really brutal. You know, journalism is already so uh, threatened. And the truth is that you can, and sports illustrated has done some great journalism. I don't know about the AI thing, but I just know that this is a sad, uh, a sad trend. And they're just, yeah. there aren't the advertising dollars to support things like uh, newspapers. And if you, just to be perfectly frank about it, that's where the real journalism is being done. And print right. journalists are doing the research. And uh, this, uh, I think the LA Times thing is something we should follow up with next, next yep. week. The race for California's next governor taking shape. State Senate leader Tony Atkins filed paperwork yesterday to run in the 2026 election and is expected to make it official today. That means she joins Lieutenant Governor Eleni Kunalakis and State Superintendent of Instruction Tony Thurmond in the campaign to replace Governor Gavin Newsom. He is serving his second and final term. The Attorney General is also considering a run. That's Rob Bonta. So you have a lot of choices for the governorship in California. There are efforts underway to save California's park passes at libraries. It's a popular way to get into more than 200 state parks for free. Last year alone, the passes were checked out more than 6,500 times, but a nonprofit organization fears that program could be canceled because of budget cuts, saying there's no funding for it in the proposal unveiled last week. So the California State Parks Foundation has launched an online petition asking everyone to help urge Governor Gavin Newsom to restore that. That money. I didn't even know that was a possibility. Mm. Caltrans is kicking off a contest to name their new snowplows. This is always a fun one. The agency is looking for something fun, appropriate, and creative. It's open to 11 districts, including San Diego, Los Angeles, Redding, Sacramento, the Bay Area, and Stockton. Each district will give the winners a $50 gift card. Don't spend it all in one place. But for any student chosen in grades K through 12, they'll get twice as, as much plus a $100 gift card for their classroom too. There will also be a grand prize winner. The deadline to enter the snowplow naming contest is February 15th. You know, these naming contests don't go well all the time. No. <laughs> um, Bodie McBokeface was my favorite, but there was yeah. another one recently that was uh, kind of a problem. <laughs> so <laughs> I would just caution on the you know public naming contests. They can be tough. As you mentioned earlier, the NFL playoffs roll on as the divisional round kicks off tomorrow. The fourth-seeded Houston Texans will travel to Baltimore Saturday afternoon to take on the top-seeded Ravens. In the NFC, on Saturday night, the seventh-seeded Green Bay Packers head to the West Coast to face the number one-seeded San Francisco 49ers. Nothing? No? Isn't it supposed to be, you know, Commissioner, isn't it supposed to be sloppy for the, for the Niners game? Yeah, I think it'll be a little wet. So uh, fortunate for us, we have a good run game. Um, Green Bay doesn't have a good game at all. So we sh it should be an easy well, game. Well, you say that, Kamish, but they dispense with the Cowboys. I mean, they blew them out. 
And then I, I would also suggest to you this kid, Jordan Love, is playing out of his mind. I mean, I, I wouldn't take them too lightly. We are favored by nine, I believe, maybe nine and a half. Yeah, and I, I like that number. I think it's going to be more. I you think, think oh, wow. Yeah. The commission is recommending you mm. take the Niners and you lay the nine and a half. That's yeah. pretty extraordinary. Commission with a rare a gambling piece of gambling advice. This is I, I caution you; it could get you into trouble. People don't like losing responsibly, their bets. responsibly. <laughs> okay. Wow, are we advocating for sports betting? We're on turning the, uh, into the uh, station that we uh, left. Yeah, exactly. yeah, they became. Who knew yeah, they didn't need to fire us after all? They you turned know? our old station into a sports gaming station. Yeah. Yeah. Lastly. It's Popcorn Day, National Popcorn Day, and movie theaters across the country will be celebrating with special offers. Americans consume about four and a half billion quarts of popcorn at movie theaters and other live venues every year. That according to the National Association of Concessionaires. I didn't know there was <laughs> association. Well done. Yes. I was, uh, usher in a, I was an usher in a movie theater and it was, they explained to me, when I got the job and I had my little jacket, like a red jacket, they give you a little uniform. Oh, but I and, wouldn't uh, give to see a picture. That's awesome. I wish I had a picture of it. Okay. It was back then, you know, pre uh, cell phone pics. But the uh, thing he explained was that we make all our money at concessions. You see, we yeah. don't make any money at the tickets. So well, they charge you like what? 30 bucks for a bucket of popcorn. Yeah. That's what yeah I was but, say. Special yeah. deal. It's, it's $25 today. It's not 20. Oh, is that what it is? So <laughs> Look at that. You know where you can get a deal. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Bring me all of the wine, all of it, to new to vineyards at Livermore. Wow, what a beautiful setting to go and taste the wine in person. If you can't make it out to Livermore, you can call them and uh, and order some wine over the phone. I recommend the Mark Thompson Why Are You Yelling Red. They've got white wines. They have 28 varietals you can choose Why from. Why are you yelling? There or is. Uh, what, is that, what is on the white. post-it there? The... Uh, the types of wines, I believe, in yeah, order. P.S. What would that be? Cab, Mark T, Zin, and I don't B.M.L. What is that? What would that be? Let's. We'll have to get that decoded. Yeah, right? we'll have to ask. Uh, okay. We'll have to ask. Anyway, Gary. that's the. Yeah, that's a flight, right? Wouldn't they call yeah. that a wine flight or something? Yeah, that's a flight of wine. So, if you'd like to have some wine. Maybe you're looking for some lovely wine to just, you know, just lay down, keep for a while, drink when it's a nice occasion, what have you. Give them a call and get 10% off. You can do that because you're a Mark Thompson Show listener and it is available to you. You do have to use the phrase that pays. And that would be... The phrase that pays. Yeah, what is it? it? Smash it with your mm -hmm. iron rod. Smash it with your iron rod. Bravo. Thank you, ma'am. Call them at 925-699-4576. Say the phrase that pays. You get your The phrase that pays. Off. Is that what we're calling it now? The phrase that pays. All right. You get your wine. You get everything. It's the phrase You're, that pays, everybody. It is the phrase that pays. Don't make fun of me. I think it's a make funnable thing, the phrase that pays. A, I think that phrase a, is oddly uh, make funnable. Radio -y. Yeah, well, you yeah. know radio. what? It's rock radio from 1977. Take a sip of coffee, have a little popcorn, hmm. order your wine, and ch 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 <laughs> This is the Mark Thompson Show. They had to close down an entire radio station to silence him. And now, he's here. Ladies and gentlemen, Mark Thompson. Yes, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure to be here. And I will tell you that uh, in addition to everything else going on on the show, thank you for finding this show the various ways you do. I can't believe it, but we're closing in on 20,000 subscribers on the show. And that may not seem what? like a big number to some of those big YouTube uh, behemoths yeah. but for us it's pretty amazing i mean we're really a little show and so for us this is quite exciting to grow the audience to this size and it looks as though our meet and greet will be next month and i'm hoping that this guy will join us at the meet and greet he's one of my favorite people who i've had a chance to work with and be around in the world that you know, started at KGO. He's a fabulous producer, fabulous John, producer Daly. John Daly. The, uh, John Daly guy. Hello. Here he is. Hello. I have a little bit of breaking news for you. What's that, sir? Alec Baldwin has been indicted by a grand wow. jury for fatal shooting on the Mexico. That, that film is. Set. Wow. Yeah. 
Man, on National Popcorn Day, they indict a yeah. movie star. That is just incredible. It's crazy. Man, there's, there's no, never been anything like I mean, this. This really hasn't that I can Speaking think of, of another murderer, I went to high school with a guy whose wife introduced Lacey Peterson to Scott Peterson. Oh, that oh. is a bad brag now, I have yeah. to say. <laughs> can you imagine? Oh. You're like, yeah, that was me. What's the worst yeah. that could happen? Yeah. yeah. He's a real great guy. <laughs> He's into uh, fertilizer sales. And, and uh, murdering you. That poor thing. Gosh, that's unreal. In that uh, uh, breaking news John mentioned, Baldwin is charged now with two counts of involuntary manslaughter. Wow. That's, yeah. This is unreal. I mean, it's hard to keep track of all the uh, uh, indictments and innocence project yeah. uh, things. I mean, this has been a very busy 24 hours. Well, Trump's kind of like, you know, confusing everybody because he's. That is true. More and, you than know, his Trump. Share. Right. Trump serves up the indictments like a short order chef. Yeah. That's great. Thank you for ding, that. Ding. Ding. Uh, Albert, you've curated a fine Friday Fabulous Florida. It does involve also a crocodile I've seen. So I'm looking Ooh. forward to uh, getting into uh, into Friday Albert, Fabulous. Albert, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Now, without any further delay on Fridays, we like to look at the state that always serves up something weird, something <laughs> dark often, something inexplicable. Inexplicable is a ding word. This is Friday Fabulous Florida. It's time for Friday Fabulous Florida. There is a gigantic alligator in my kitchen. A look at the weirdest stories from our weirdest state. Let's start in Cape Coral, Florida. A guy arrested after he was caught lurking in a neighborhood that had been hit by bonsai tree thieves in some way. These bonsai trees in Florida Ooh. were going missing, you see. And they made an arrest and charged Troy Dean Stewart, 35-year-old, with one count of loitering. And you're probably saying, oh, he looks kind of normal. Like, what about this guy could possibly have lifted him to the profile at which officers and those looking at him might see him as suspicious? Well, he had underwear around his neck, everyone, mm. which is a... Yeah, not a good not, look. Not a good look, not dressed for success. Officers responded to this call from a neighbor who said there was a prowler in their backyard, and he was seen wearing a gray hoodie, black shorts, dark mask on his face as he hid behind a chair. And he also apparently... Uh, had a pair of underwear around his neck, according to the uh, coral. What are they? The the Cape Coral cops. Yeah. John was wants it, to know: he, Was it his underwear or somebody else's? That is a follow-up. He told <laughs> officers he was uh, confronted by two men, ran away, and was trying to hide from those guys. You know, the officer, it's not my problem. The problem is these guys I'm trying to hide from. And he could have hidden had he not chosen bonsai trees. Bonsai trees are expensive, $7,000 a piece. Not easy so, to hide behind. This no. just happened in Oakland a couple days ago. Yeah, $20,000 yeah. worth. Yeah. Wow. That's bonsai he did tell officers thing. that he was wearing the underwear around his neck to protect his face from the cold. He <laughs> added that air, that he was in the area to exercise. He, he said he liked the aesthetic of the area and wanted to avoid cars on the road. Wow, that is really. Uh, I'm going to give him a ding for aesthetic. Uh, yeah, I thought you were going to say the aesthetic strong. of having the underwear on his head. Yeah, I'm just. I really like to rock the uh, the aesthetic. Yeah, cops don't hear the uh, that often, but uh, very good details, Albert. Thank you, sir. Um, Albert, thank you. Meantime, on the other side of town, a Florida man walks a mile to get help. That in itself wouldn't be even something we'd report, but. He walked a mile after getting shot in the head during an argument, everyone. Oh, oh man. Police arresting a 33-year-old man on suspicion of trying to kill another man during an argument. It happened just a couple days ago on Wednesday. Mm. Happened in the 100 block of Harder Drive. You know where that is, John? Yep. Officers found a 44-year-old victim with an apparent gunshot wound to his head. How did he make it a mile? Wow. Exactly. What a guy. I wouldn't say that was a walk. That was probably more of a stumble. 
Yeah, even more right. impressive. Yeah. Well, apparently Hastings and the victim, they identified this guy, Christopher Hastings, as the primary suspect. Apparently he and this victim got into a dispute at a friend's residence, during which Hastings oh. shot him. And that uh, led to the victim staggering a mile with the gunshot wound to the head. Yeah, he was in shock, obviously. He walked to another friend's home to alert police. It was a mile he walked. The Holly Hill police chief, Jeff Miller, told media that the victim was hospitalized at the Halifax Health Medical Center in Daytona Beach and was alive, but unconscious as of this report. The dude who shot him, this guy Hastings, is in police custody, as he should be. A little scary, that guy. Scary indeed. Yeah. If you get shot, just go to the closest house. Yeah, I don't know about <laughs> I don't know about the mile walk. I don't get no. that. But I'm guessing also if you've been shot in the head, you probably uh as noted are in shock and not yeah. thinking so clearly. My bad. I'm air. sorry. <laughs> nice stroll. He is a tough mother, says Walter. It's true. An eight foot crocodile is spotted sunbathing on a floating dock at a Florida condominium. It's the Bay Colony Club in Fort Lauderdale. And the Crocs are feeling comfy. We have, <laughs> I mean, that is really something you don't want to get near. We have a shot of it up here on YouTube. If you're listening on the podcast. I, I think it was like a, a public service announcement. You know, the crocodile is just reminding the residents of the colony there. Listen, this is not the place to go swimming. Right. This is my place. We're right. here, and here we are. I'm laying on your dock, so don't say you don't know we're in here. She called the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission, the lady who saw this and then videoed this, but she was told that they could not respond. Why? There's a croc on <laughs> my floating dock, but croc it's croc Martin dock. Luther King Day. <laughs> we cannot come out on MLK Day, they said. That's for real. I didn't make There's that There's never up. been anything uh, like this. Yeah. I thought you were going to say they can't move them on on holidays. Just... I got <laughs> that too. <laughs> they get to take the holiday too. We right can now, come out there, man. Do you really, though? You want to disturb MLK? Yeah. You want to disturb this croc on MLK Day? Come on. A Florida man accidentally films himself. Well, there's no harm in that. But he films himself stealing the security camera, everyone. That. Nice. Yeah. So we have a clean look at the guy that we'll share with you. His theft of a surveillance camera backfired because the camera did the very thing it was supposed to do, which is video those people who are trying to get away with something. It was at a construction uh, site. You know, a lot of these construction sites get raw materials and other stuff ripped off. So the construction company bought the camera to keep watch of the property they were working on, and there's the guy. <laughs> look at him. Yeah. He's... Got his mouth hanging open as he disassembles the camera. And yeah, what is it his uh, photo has been... camera for <laughs> <laughs> the photo has been released. Law enforcement is asking the public's help down there to identify him. Get him, says a Florida woman accusing uh, her boyfriend of any number of things. She sicked her pit bull on the ex boyfriend. Jennifer Flores faces three counts in this. Pitbull attack. Uh oh. She's uh, in, this comes out of Flagler County, Florida. I know a lot of people have the map out and they like the little, put the little pin in the various stories in different parts of the state from which these stories emerge. They all take their turn. Mm. This is a, <laughs> uh, uh, a woman who was taken into custody after her pit bull attacked her date. Mm. Uh, cops are saying that apparently, uh, they noticed this white Camaro and a man in blood got out of, he covered in blood, got out of the Camaro and ran to the officer. Was he getting handsy with her or rough with her or something? Well, he said that his ex-girlfriend who is here, we got a picture of her, Jennifer Flores, she's 34, had her dog attack him in an argument. Oh. According to cops, Flores reportedly asked the man to come to her apartment that day, despite uh, the fact that they weren't dating any longer. They argued about his previous relationships. Again, this is from the, the cops. And then Flores 
threw his belongings in her bathroom and began choking him with a gold chain oh. that he'd been wearing. The man told officers that he grabbed his things, pushed her aside, but Flores told her pit bull named Wasabi to, quote, get him. Flores grabbed him again. She grabbed him again, and the pit bull attacked him, tearing at his arms and legs. Oh, gosh. He ultimately got away, got treatment for his injuries before telling officers that he would drive himself to the hospital. Cops say they went to Flores' apartment, which had blood on the door and living room, along with rubbing alcohol. There was a bottle of rubbing alcohol. The pit bull was caged near the front door. She eventually came to the front door, did Flores, arguing with law enforcement and mentioning that she had been drinking. What a surprise that is. I'd be willing to yeah, bet my yeah. lunch that there's alcohol well, you, The bet is who, off because we've already told you that there's who alcohol. Who let the involved. dog out? Who let the dog out? Very well done. <laughs> yeah. uh, the 64-year-old Florida man who was run over by his own truck. I'm loving it. Dwayne Kenneth Musselman was identified as the victim in this incident. He was using his Chevy Silverado, that's a heck of a truck, yep. to remove a large stump. It was uh, on his property, but it was not properly placed in park, the Chevy Silverado. Uh -huh. And as he was standing outside the driver's side door, the truck began to... Roll backward down a hill with the driver door open. Uh-oh. As the truck continued to roll backward, the driver door knocked Musselman to the ground. He was then run over by the front of the truck. What? I wish I could report a happy ending of some oh. kind, a Hollywood ending where he gets up and says, I'm okay, as he dusts himself off. <laughs> That's not the but case. He died at the scene. Oh, wow. Oh. Florida man throws beer can, fires AR-15 rifle after being upset by drivers speeding in his neighborhood. What? Wow. This is more like it. Excellent. Yes. You're going to love this. It comes out of Sheriff Grady Judge's mm. jurisdiction. There is a sheriff right there. Yeah. Polk County Sheriff Grady Judd. Holds up the picture of what the, he's got going here, here is, is a situation. situation. You tell him, Grady. A Polk County man facing felony charges. Investigators say his temper raced as a vehicle sped past his house. Grady Judd told investigators that this guy threw a beer can at a vehicle because it was speeding in the neighborhood. I can and understand then, that anger, right? I mean, have you sure. ever been angry at a speeding driver? All the time. Past your house? Absolutely. All I am is angry at, <laughs> at speeding drivers. Why are you yelling? I totally get it. But I don't grab my AR-15 rifle because I don't have an AR-15 mm -hmm. rifle. Apparently, he grabbed his AR-15 and shot three times. Once in the air and twice in the ground, according to... Uh, Grady Judd. There's a reason mm. that this place is fun. And then deputies uh, and Grady Judd say there's a video, you know, showing the entire thing. So he really doesn't have any high ground. He Drinking was arrested. Shooting. He was arrested for aggravated assault. And then Judd said this. We always love a quote from Grady Judd. Yeah, zinger. If you're that stirred up, just call us. We'll <laughs> deal with it. And you won't end up in jail charged with a felony. What he's got going <laughs> here is a situation. Do you, uh, do you know where Grady Judd was born? No, where? Lakeland, Florida. He never left. Uh, I County. love it. He's cleaning up the community in which he was raised. Yeah. Yeah. A Florida man accidentally left his phone in a Walmart bathroom. Then a stranger used that phone to call oh. in a bomb threat. As one does. <laughs> Cody Clements admitted to making There's the threat. There's never been anything after, like this. After he saw people making similar calls on TikTok. The guy ended up in this Walmart bathroom stall. He used this phone. And I, I don't know. I guess the phone was abandoned. It, 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 they, arrived, they arrested this guy. Cody Clements is his name. He's 28 years old of Northport. And he called in a false report of... A, a bomb at uh, this neighborhood of Walmart. I, I, I don't know what, what's the motivation there. My brain exactly. would never work that way. 
Well, you know, if they're doing it on TikTok, it must be the thing, right? That's it. I mean, yeah. literally, that's what he's saying. Clements is accused of calling 911, telling dispatchers there was a bomb inside the store and hung up on the phone. When dispatchers called him back, Clements reportedly said, TikTok, TikTok. <laughs> what an uh, idiot. Uh, deputies searched the Walmart, connected with the phone's owner, who told authorities that he'd accidentally left his phone inside the store's restroom, the original owner of the phone. And he said he th saw through his Bluetooth that 911 was, tr uh, you know, 911 was being uh, called. Mm -hmm. So uh, they make the arrest. And uh, that was thanks to the guy who was the original owner of the phone. And they see this guy, Clements, enter the restroom after the phone's owner left. This is all from security cameras, and they made the arrest. Authorities say the suspect admitted to making the threat after he saw people making similar calls on TikTok. Wow. Well, it sounds like an old-fashioned, like an old Batman villain doing something very innocent, but it's <laughs> kind of a big deal. Right. Put it yeah, uh, these bomb threats these days, I, I think they're kind of, they, well, you know me. I don't, I, don't have, I have zero tolerance. They're lacking originality. Yeah, it's yeah been, but it is it's true. Been done, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. In Florida, come on. I mean, why don't you up. order pizza or something? Do something. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's like Bart Graham. Simpson. Mm -hmm. um, Deidre, yeah, breaking news from the USA Today. Go ahead, Mark. Sorry. Yeah, they're not dead. Falling iguanas in the forecast in Florida this weekend. Yeah, the <laughs> the cold weather causes the iguanas to essentially uh, they're paralyzed and they just fall out of these trees. Yeah. They're an invasive species. These iguanas, I think. So they're not used to the cold down there. So Florida the man, what's that? So are the residents. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I asked you to repeat that. That was funny. Yeah. All right. So, uh, look, we don't want to pick a favorite, but we kind of have to. We finished strong, but they're all pretty good competitors. Albert, what is in the chat? What's it between in the chat? What are the choices in the chat? Um, I, I did steal some of these. <clears throat> I did see Croc on the dock. That was a user, a viewer's uh, suggestion, but that's on there. Underwear, Bonsai Thief, Grady Judd. Buzz, angry Florida man, and bomb threat on found phone. Those are, uh, All right. Those are the uh, choices. You can vote live in the chat, and you can also vote after the fact. If you're listening in delay, which most people do, please vote in the comments. We're always curious to see what people's favorites are. There's a croc on my dock and other stories from Dr. Suits, says Eric. <laughs> I'll remind you before we pick a favorite of those that you have just heard. Uh... The Florida man who, again, accused of being the bonsai tree thief, found with underwear around his neck as he hid from cops. He says he was hiding from people chasing him. The Florida man walking a mile to get help after he was shot in the head during an argument. The eight-foot crocodile spotted sunbathing on the floating dock at that Florida condo. They couldn't remove him because it was MLK Day. No one was working. Florida <laughs> man accidentally films himself. Stealing a camera at a security site. Yeah. Get him, said a Florida woman accused of sticking her pit bull on her ex-boyfriend. Mm. The 64-year-old man run over by his own truck. The Florida man throwing the beer can at passing cars, firing an AR-15 rifle at those cars because he was upset that drivers were speeding in his neighborhood. And finally, the Florida man finding the Walmart bathroom cell phone abandoned and he decided to call in a bomb threat what is your favorite i'll ask you kim kim how are oh. you well we haven't had a an alligator in a while there's a dispute in the chat whether that's an alligator or a crocodile oh yeah. well, albert's uh, our expert oh yeah yeah crocodile it was a Croc. invasive species but gators are native to florida crocodiles are invasive but that was a crocodile a croc. yeah. albert croc thank you yeah there you go so i like the croc on the dock but i think i have to go with the ar-15 guy mad at passing speeders mm, ar-15 yeah. mm -hmm. how about you john daly I'm going to go with bonsai theft only because it has so Producer much in John it. Daly. He didn't stop with just the bonsai. He also, you know, got fashionable and put the underwear on his head. Mm, the underwear does put him in a pretty competitive uh, position. Yeah. How about you, Albert? I'm the same with John and the viewers also kind of agree, but it, it just, it's like the classic Mad Libs. John likes the Mad right. Libs. Thank you. Mad yeah. Libs. Stolen yeah. bonsai thief with underwear <laughs> around the head. Is Check. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. Um, I am going to go only because it's so Americana and Florida. There's a beer can being thrown. 
and there's an AR-15 rifle, which is so American now. And there's a you know some drunk a hole shooting at other people who he thinks are a holes. I'm going with the AR-15 rifle. What's the leader in the voting, Albert? The bonsai th- the tree guy. The underwear. bonsai tree yeah. guy gets the Very wow. Well, underwear. that's Friday Fabulous Florida for today. This has been Friday Fabulous Florida. There is a gigantic alligator in my kitchen. Y'all come back now, here. It's with the uh, greatest thanks that I say goodbye to fabulous producer John Daly. Fabulous producer uh, you John can Daly. Hear John on the After Party Live, doing that with uh, Kim right after the show we'll ends live. over on the After Party we'll live. live station. So, and uh, one question, Kim, yes, did you remind Albert to tweet about the show? Uh, no, uh, but I'll, I'll do it myself. It's okay. I uh, <laughs> working on it. Albert, down lately. Albert did. <laughs> Albert did tweet about our show okay, today, so uh, bravo, Albert. Uh, John, thank you. John Daly, everybody. Bye, John. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are uh, running just a taste behind because it was such a delicious Friday Fabulous Florida, so we'll move right to Michael Shore next. The Mark Thompson Show. Put it together for a guy who was seeing him on MSNBC this week. Wow, he's there all over you like crazy. I mean, it's uh, unreal what they're doing with Michael Shore these days. He's forgotten more about politics than most of us will ever know. He's covered the Trump rallies. He covered the Iowa caucus. And now he's uh, on to the New Hampshire primary. How about it for Michael Shore, everyone? (laughs) Michael, thank you for taking a few minutes. I know we have short time with you because you have uh, other media obligations. As you're the darling at the dance now, my friend. Well, I would, uh, I would love to be that. I uh, always I was until they saw me dance. By the way, I got. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, Michael, wonder what's happening on the GOP side. I see Elise Stefanik. We were talking about it in the last hour, circling, and clearly she pretty much carries Trump water, no matter what the water involves. Uh, she's the likely VP candidate for him. Yeah, it's it's certainly too early to tell. She's a name in the conversation. Um, I, I would, you know, a lot of it's going to have to do with what you know. His official residence is Florida, uh, so if it, it remains that, then he's able to put a New Yorker on his ticket, which you wouldn't be able to do with a Floridian. You have to be from different states. Uh, I think that Christy Nome is someone that um, I still think would be the most likely, um, if, if I were to put a bet on it, to be his running mate. People are talking about Tucker Carlson as well, which is kind of a wild card. But I, my guess would be uh, that those are three names that will be in the hat. And, and, and then it also becomes, you know, you start seeing how he's doing and what's going on, how many people People want to attach themselves to him. Uh, they realize also a lot of Republicans, there are only four years left uh, at the very worst of Donald Trump in terms of being president without a constitutional change. And and I think that they some are going to just want to distance them, themselves from that and, and sort of suffer through it and then come out on the other side. But those are three names that obviously are being talked about. The politics of what's just happened in keeping the government open, I think they're fascinating Maybe you can explain, uh, so because I know it is sort of X's and O's, but yeah. this Mike Johnson may go the way of Kevin McCarthy because he had to keep the government open uh, as something that I think he felt was good for the GOP, even though it may not be good for Donald Trump. I mean, Trump would love to see, you know, the country yeah. on its side. Right, go ahead. Kind of shocking are some of the people that split from Mike Johnson in those votes. I mean, you 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 see people who have been kind of on his side for a long time, um, leaders of uh, you know chairman of committee and and leaders in the House who've been on his side for a long time, and they are leaving. So I mean, you're talking about um, Roger Williams, who's the head of uh, small business, Mark Green, Homeland Security, Mike Gallagher, the, the he was on the, the China Select Committee. These are big names. And they're big conservative names. Stefanik went against him. Jody Arrington, the budget chair. I mean, these are real um, dyed in the wool conservatives going against a speaker, and that doesn't bode well for him. There's still a lot of time. I mean, what it does is it buys Johnson 
time to fight hard on other issues, which is important as well. Uh, so, so not only does it extend, extend um, you know, funding the government uh, temporarily, but it also allows Mike Johnson to be speaker on other issues. And I would imagine he's going to get a lot of those people back. The, the tough part for Republicans on the Hill right now is, is Donald Trump and immigration, because Donald Trump still holds sway as the leader of the party over what senators and, and House members do on the Republican side in, in Washington. And, you know, as badly as the Democrats realize they need to do something on immigration, the Republicans don't want Joe Biden to have any credit for doing anything on immigration, even though they say that they want something done on immigration. But if Biden gets any of the credit, it somehow neutralizes a little bit of what is a very good message for Republicans on the campaign trail. That just says it so well, you know, how continues to be the immigration and border issue, something that's used for political ends as opposed to really trying to find solutions or trying to even broker any kind of solution with the other side. Yeah. So uh, speak for a moment, Michael, to the court cases that loom for Trump. It seems as though his general strategy of killing the clock, you know, just delay, 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 it's kind of working. And the new stuff out of Georgia that they may actually, that that trial may be delayed in the in overturning the election. Um, I, I, I wonder, Michael, might it really all work out for Trump that he's able to effectively delay things? It, to, it's hard to, to say. I mean, you know, uh, uh, American jurisprudence takes a long time and, and they don't run on the same schedule of, oh, there's an election in November. Of course, as a human, you can't put that out of your mind. But, but this is the kind of case where he not running for office, it would be taking this long. He would be fighting. There would be delays. There would be motions. Then you have out of left field um, something that happened with Fonnie Willis and somebody worked for her, uh, who she may have dated. And, uh, you know, there are questions that any defense would want to put forward about the prosecutor if that were the case. So these are all are, are all what I see to be normal um, issues. But that doesn't mean that, that, that some of these cases are not going to come up. It doesn't mean there's not an indictment ahead. It doesn't also mean that there isn't more to come down the pipe. So I, I, it's hard to say uh, what the effect is in terms of predictability. It is still a distraction. It still eats into his um, into his uh, time on the trail. It eats into his message. Uh, and it also takes people uh, people's attention in the Republican Party away from where they want to be. I mean, people are not happy in either party about what this election is shaping up to be between the president and the former president. But but that's what if that's what it is, they're going to have to find a way around it. And these indictments, I think, are going to matter to some uh, some Republicans. I, you know, I spoke to some when I was in Iowa last week, I was I was speaking to some Haley supporters who said to me that yeah, they're not going to go to Donald Trump after this. They're not sure what they're going to do. Some said they won't vote. But there are Republicans who are, don't want the court cases either. The New Hampshire primary, Michael, you've just come from Iowa, as you've said, and you really swim in the stream as a reporter and journalist talking to Trump loyalists and looking at things from sort of on the ground on a granular level and also the 30,000 foot view. Can you give us both from the standpoint now of New New Hampshire primary? Yeah, you know, and I think it's also important to talk to colleagues, right? Or talk to peers um, uh, when you're there. To speak, speak to other journalists and what they're seeing in different places. You, you know, Iowa has 99 counties and you can't be in all of them. So you have people that are going to went to Vivek Ramaswamy events and talking to their vote, to his voters and what they were going to do. You learn also from from other journalists. I mean, I think that the, the common wisdom here is that if there is going to be a stand made against Donald Trump, it's going to happen in New Hampshire. Uh, Nikki Haley is, if she's able to hang on, she keeps making mistakes, but they don't seem to be fatal because a lot of her support just comes from people who don't want Trump. So no matter what Haley says, uh, that is a slip up or a gaffe or maybe not a great answer. Uh, she's still not Donald Trump to them. And whether or not there's a strong enough voice in, in typically independent uh, New Hampshire, uh, then then th th we'll see that, right? She has the support of a very, very popular governor. Ron DeSantis has basically left. Uh, Chris Christie left and he had 12% in the last poll in New Hampshire. And those people, I would say by and large, almost you know hard, hard to be able to see any of them going to Trump. Uh, so I think she has a chance. And then what's next? South Carolina, Nevada. I mean, these are states where South Carolina, certainly she was the governor there. Uh, she, so this is where she could make her run. 
I, there's nothing to me that indicates that this is going to change the course of the election, but without it, um, you know, we won't know. And so I think if she does well there and, and she is able to even, you know, get a, a sizable win in New Hampshire, not just a win, then it's part of the, the conversation. A part of the conversation because she then might get some money flow into her campaign as well? Absolutely. Money flow, endorsements, people in other states taking a good look, people who are voting, who are not necessarily either sure they're going to vote for Donald Trump or are voting for Donald Trump and they're, they're not excited about it. Maybe they say, all right, maybe this is the best path forward is to go with somebody else. And look, her numbers show that she can beat the president. So why not go with her? I mean, again, this is everything falling into place for Nikki Haley, which it hasn't done yet. I mean, she she came in third in Iowa, not second. So um, we're, we're talking talking about a big hypothetical, but that would be the, the best case scenario for, for Ambassador Haley right now. And just because we're talking about her and you mentioned South Carolina, she's behind in her home state. Um, yeah. Is there a, an outcome there, assuming that the polls reflect the general flow of votes that would leave her losing to Trump, but oddly in a favorable position? Uh, no, I don't think you lose your home state and are in a favorable position. I mean, if you even coming close is not what you want, right? I mean, I just don't think there's anything that looks good about losing your home state in a primary. And I can't, I mean, I know it's happened, uh, but to top line elected officials, whether it be a senator or a governor, it's very hard. People have won statewide and then lose in a primary. Uh, I just don't see how you can put, uh, put a good face on that at all. And finally, Michael Shore, the situation with Biden, this administration, they've handled, I think, fairly deftly a lot of very tough stuff. You can start with COVID and, you know, go from there to infrastructure bill and all of these uh, yeah. in this highly politicized environment. But now you add to this some legit international unrest, to put it politely, um, yeah. with the Middle East teetering on some level and the Houthis involved in, in some of that teeter. I wonder if you can give me some framework as to how to evaluate that politically I'm talking about for Joe Biden. Right. I mean, this doesn't seem um, uh, other than sending money overseas, which people don't like. Uh, this doesn't seem like a foreign policy election for people who don't like the president. Uh, they're going to point to the exit in Afghanistan. You'll see ads about that. Certainly in the fall, they're going to talk, talk about how, you know, I speak to voters who are saying that they blame Biden for Ukraine and Israel. Right. That this would never have happened on Trump's watch. It's absurd to say that because we don't know. But that Joe Biden had anything to do with Vladimir Putin entering Ukraine and that Hamas was invited in by Biden in some way is very, very distant from the truth. That said, these people do believe it. So on foreign policy, they think that Trump was a better foreign policy president, that he lifted our standing in the world, which, you know, I, I both anecdotally and in conversation, we know not to be the case. So I, I think that Biden is going to, and we've talked about it, you and I, for a while, Kim, as well, that the money is going to be spent, right? And when the money is spent, defining that record is going to be important. I think the money is going to start being spent after New Hampshire. I really do. I think you're going to start seeing a lot of money spent very soon. I was watching this morning because I knew you were coming on some of your videos that you do from the Iowa rally, I guess, most recently yeah. with Trump supporters. And there are a whole bunch of things like, of the sort that you've just referenced. And, and, you know, that is to say, if Trump had been president, that you know, right. Putin never would have gone into Ukraine, et cetera. But the one that really jumped out at me, and you're really good at like, you, as you say, you know, you you like these people on some level and person to person, I mean, much of the time, but you also just, you know, can't understand there's a wall of, you know, the logic wall is, is there. Anyway, yeah. the one that jumped out at me this morning was that COVID was released deliberately by the U.S. government right. to control the people. And I'm thinking, yeah. that was released by the U.S. government that Trump was in charge of? To control, you know, it's it was. There such you go. But they don't. They think it's there's a deep state that does these things to undermine Trump. That that's even bigger than Trump. Uh, they call it the pandemic. That segment of the people I speak to, the pandemic, not the pandemic, and um, it's astonishing. They'll they'll they believe a lot of things that aren't true, which is, you know, which is why I ask them very often if they're in a cult, and I I ask it very seriously. Do they feel like this is cult like? Not if they're in a cult. 
uh, because that's those are the sorts of things that you you find a guru or a master or a leader that you follow and everything that that person says you buy into and that seems to be what's happening here and there's not a great deal of information seeking or getting it from the people that they want to there's one man i interviewed this wasn't about trump it was about he said something about george floyd and he said you know george they, that cop didn't have the knee on his neck and i said to the guy i said did you see the video he said no <laughs> and that to me was one of the most interesting interactions i've had doing these because it, it really is emblematic of they just have to hear it they don't have to see it and if somebody that they like is saying it uh, or if it fulfills a narrative that exists in their head. I mean, he he went on to say, look, Republicans are peaceful. They wouldn't have done uh, what happened on January 6th. It had to have been Democrats, because look at what happened in the Democratic cities. You know, it's... Yeah. It's they, they, they find things that, that fill that uh, belief system. And I think that's exactly right. They find things. I mean, and I've really seen it. It's just so excruciatingly obvious as I watch your videos. So congratulations on I, I'm sure, you know, in a way, you know, you're, you're this journalist who's, you know, uh, involved with uh, at so, so many other levels. And so right. to deal with these people who are just attending a rally might be, you know, a little it's bit of an a odd, It's an odd body, an odd yeah. and unexpected <laughs> body of work. But it, right. But uh, that it's, said, it's, it's yeah. insanely popular. You know, the, yeah. I don't know if you've noticed the numbers on these millions of people watch these videos. Yeah, so uh, crazy. And it's enlightening. And Howard, Sir, Howard Stern said my name on the air today, which is really oh, the other So day. you've got that. Very nice. Well, I know, as I said, you're getting to be the media darling. You're the next one who uh will graduate out of the mark thompson show uh network to uh to a bigger network uh i'll let this you go to always, your... this is always home i promise uh thanks pal you're the greatest uh how about it for michael shore thanks michael thanks guys the, uh, right, see the mark thompson show albert i had to get uh michael to his next thing so i had to wrap that up so albert now, thank you i have a fork in the road albert you know i love choices that I hand over to you because you're the producer. <laughs> yep. You're in the captain's chair. You're the big cheese. You're number one. <laughs> Albert, thank you. <laughs> so I have papal news. The Pope came through with something. I was going to talk about it Monday, probably with Joe Ferullo if I could get him because he writes and is the editor-in-chief of that Catholic publication. And it's about SEX. And I also have, and I kind of think this is important, some additional stories about Boeing and other aircraft that are suffering right now some pretty serious situations. So I'm wondering if you don't what think... What he's got going here is a situation. <laughs> I wonder if you don't think that we should do a little turbo stories from the sky, Kim's News, and then Snyder. How do you feel about that? I like that. Or we could even do, uh, we could flip-flop that around and go straight to news. And Quick then stories and, from the sky right after. Okay, let's do that. Um, power to the papal, says Sir Tom. <laughs> uh, let's do that. Kim's news. Then I'll slam a story from the sky in, and then the culture blaster on movies and television series. Meanwhile, smash, smash the like button like a boss. Iron rod. Thank you for supporting this show. This crowd-funded show needs the Mark Thompson show. Yes, needs you as the crowd. And uh, you can go to themarkthompsonshow.com, click the Patreon or PayPal links, and if you can, you know, spot us if you don't have, you know, a Starbucks coffee a week, that's 20 bucks and you could uh, be part of our community and support us on a regular basis and that helps us make payroll. So thank you for that. All right. Kim's news and then stories from the sky and Snyder next Mark Thompson. Show. The Mark Thompson show. On the Mark Thompson show, I'm Kim McAllister. As previously mentioned here on the Mark Thompson show, New Mexico prosecutors are once again indicting Alec Baldwin on charges of involuntary manslaughter. Those charges, which had been dropped last year, stem from the onset shooting death of cinematographer Helena Hutchins during the filming of Rust in 2021. The gun contained live rounds instead of blanks. Prosecutors say new tests refute defense attorney claims that Baldwin never actually pulled the trigger.
Thousands of anti-abortion activists are in Washington, D.C. today for the 2024 March for Life. It's the group's second march since the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade. The demonstrators will gather on the National Mall for a rally at noon local time before marching to the Supreme Court building. Good luck out in that snow. Wall Street is on pace for a record day. The S&P 500 hit an all-time high earlier today. Now, looks like the NASDAQ is on pace to do the same. None of the five people aboard an Atlas Air cargo plane that was shooting flames shortly after takeoff last night were hurt. The pilot turned the plane around, landed safely 15 minutes after takeoff at Miami International. The FAA said in a preliminary report that a softball-sized hole above one of the plane's engines was found. Scary. Two Bay Area school districts are being investigated for civil rights violations. The U.S. Department of Education confirms that it is looking into discrimination complaints involving shared ancestry at Oakland and San Francisco Unified School Districts. The Jewish Community Relations Council reacted to that news, saying they've been concerned since October about the safety and belonging of Jewish students in both districts. The group claims at least 30 families in Oakland have transferred their children elsewhere because of it. That's so sad. It really is. Really? Uh, Stowe Lake in San Francisco's Golden Gate Park is now called something else, not Stowe. It was named after a former California lawmaker who was also the most openly anti-Semitic politician in state uh, politician in state history. Uh, that's and that's saying something, really. A city supervisor began. That's an award <laughs> show I don't want to go to. <laughs> right? Yeah. Who is the worst? Yeah. The most anti-Semitic <laughs> public official in history. The award goes to. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. A uh, city supervisor began the push to rename it last year, and now. Now, Blue Heron is Lake is what it will be called. That was the most suggested. So the Recreation and Park Commission voted yesterday to call it that. The new name, Blue Heron Lake, will replace uh, the Stowe Lake Drive and Stowe Lake Boathouse as well. So get ready for Blue Heron. We'll have to get used to that new name. I like it. Yeah, Blue Heron Lake. Apparently there are Blue Herons there. Who knew? Let's hope. Otherwise, it really uh, it's an odd choice. Lawyers for Harvard Medical School were expected to ask a judge today to dismiss lawsuits. The Boston Globe reporting the suits were filed by families who were affected by the theft of human remains from the school's morgue. The morgue's former manager is charged with stealing and selling body parts that had been donated for research. Ooh, that's kind of ucky. Ucky and yucky. I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, what, what else can you say about that? Really? Mm. <laughs> well, you could say, there's never been anything like this you could say that i suppose uh, there probably has that's the scary part um anything else nope i think that wraps it up this report <laughs> is sponsored by coachellavalleycoffee.com come on coachella mm. and it's not just coffee oh no they have the tea indeed as a matter of fact i've got my tea right here in my Stanley cup, which was gifted to me. No, I didn't spend $45 on this cup, but, uh, the Moroccan mint. Is- What's a Stanley cup? Oh my God. How do you not know <laughs> this? What's wrong with you? Oh, I've never seen Kim so agitated or excited about something. Oh my God. Oh, yeah. What is it? It is a very trendy, uh, everybody must have this, a wildly oh. expensive, stupid well, cup trendy and wildly expensive uh so far i haven't heard any reason that it's particularly good well i will it's say also it's also the thing i dream of mark for my san jose sharks we could never get close enough yes the stanley like, cup that's the one the i know stanley not that right. stanley cup but this yeah. stanley cup is full of the moroccan mint man is it good i'll tell you that the tea well, is the moroccan amazing. mint is you you know that is yeah you've been rocking the moroccan I have been rocking Moroccan, and you've been rocking the uh, the what espresso over there. What are you drinking? I've got the Ocotillo espresso. Mm-hmm. I also have the uh, the Elgato espresso, and yeah. I like their. I still have some of the Holiday Blend. I found it in a drawer, and we're just making some Ooh. of that. Oh, that's such a good coffee. Yeah, that's really uh, good. The Stanley Cup is a big gulp for rich people, is what yeah. uh, Fenia says. So, <laughs> which is why it's shocking that I actually have a Stanley Cup. Uh, yeah. I feel- surprised the NHL yeah. has not sued them. Says Jim. Exactly. Weird. I don't know. I think maybe the I don't know how long the Stanley soccer or the Stanley hockey cup has been around, but the Stanley brand 
has been yeah. around since 1913. So maybe yeah. they have the market cornered on that. Is that the St the Stanley Tool brand? It's the same company? No, you know the old green thermoses or the uh, thermos is another brand, but the old the old green, you know, kind of thing you put your hot yeah, coffee in to take course, you on yeah. your construction job or out yeah, fishing. Yeah, right, when you went day. hiking or whatever, sure. Same brand, same brand, but now oh, okay. they've upgraded. So, and I believe the Hockey Stanley Cup uh, first awarded in 1893, Kim. So oh, wow. really? Very good knowledge. Uh, uh, well yeah. done on the research. Impressive. For that. Yeah. Albert, yeah. thank you. Yeah, I'm well. expecting a sorry from you, Kim. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but you know what? If you want to try the coffee, if you want to yeah. try the tea, you can have 10% off as you do it. So check it out. It's CoachellaValleyCoffee.com. When you pick something and you go to your cart, you put Mark T all together uh, in the checkout code area and you get your 10% off. So wow. do it. It's worth it. It's amazing. The tea lasts, uh, the, the the little bag of tea they send you will last you a while. Super good. Uh, I'm Kim McAllister. This is Yipper, the Mark Thompson show. The Mark Thompson show. Who's Mark Thompson? 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 Yeah, right here, kids. Right here. It's our Friday show. Just minutes before the Culture Blaster slides in, we will uh, give you a little news, and I think it's important, and it's kind of bizarre how this is happening um talking about things that relate to aviation we include them all in a segment we call stories from the sky we have clearance clarence roger roger what's our vector victor enough is enough i have had it with these monkey fighting snakes on this monday to friday plane everybody strap in terrifying moments and a mayday call as there's an engine fire on a Boeing 747 jet from Miami. Inspectors look and they find a softball size hole above the engine. Mayday, mayday, we have an engine fire. Request access back to the airport. We have five souls on board, the pilot can be heard saying. This is an audio that was obtained by media. The captain said the incident involved engine number two, and it occurred on the climb out of the airport. The officials, they say, you can see the flame now if you're looking in YouTube. That's the video of the engine on fire being shot from the ground there in Miami. Boeing has been the center of more and more controversies involving the safety and security of their aircraft. And you can see those sparks shooting out of that Atlas Air Jet's tail after it suffered engine failure. Officials have confirmed that the engine caught fire, but said that an investigation is going to determine why and what happened. Um, it's a cargo plane. That's why there are only five people on board. $400 million worth of cargo. And it just happened last night. And this is the video in. Uh, if you're curious... Boeing stock has taken a plunge down about 20% this month so far following this string of incidents. Been a bad time to be in Boeing, but they are paying, I think, for, you know, legit screw-ups all along the way in terms of the construction of these aircraft. And then, more and more, they're reporting something in media that we've been talking about for literally years. We talked about it on KGO. I did a whole thing after the Boeing crashes with the MAX aircraft in Africa, the two crashes killing so many people, we talked about the cozy relationship between Boeing and the regulatory agency that's supposed to overlook these aircraft, the FAA. And uh, now I'm seeing more of that. The longstanding special relationship between the U.S. government and Boeing has come under growing scrutiny. This particularly after two crashes involving the 737 MAX 8 plane in 2018 and 2019, those tragedies have prompted significant changes 
a new CEO at Boeing, and revamped oversight rules at the FAA. You'll recall that I told you at the time of those tragedies that essentially the FAA let Boeing self-police. That's changed a bit, and there may be even greater changes coming. The latest safety incident involving the Boeing jet, the 737 MAX 9, is raising more questions about whether that response back in 2018 and 2019 following those tragedies went far enough. Investigators are still trying to determine why that panel blew off the Alaska Airlines jet in midair. The head of the FAA is saying it's time to re-examine the longtime practice of delegating some of the agency's oversight responsibility to Boeing employees. Mm. Raising the possibility of more oversight from a third party. That would be an amazing shift given how close Boeing is to the U.S. government. U.S. government actually helps Boeing sell planes overseas. Boeing's importance to the economy is so great. They employ 140,000 people. David K. Johnson and I were talking about this the other day. They employ them directly. The company also supports a network of suppliers and contractors that reaches across the country. That's even more jobs, right? Small businesses are up and down the supply chain. And President Obama was cheerleading Boeing as they tried to get business over in Europe. Donald Trump as well. Donald Trump said this, God bless you, may God bless the United States of America, and God bless Boeing. He hmm. said that during a 2017, a 2017 visit to a plant in South Carolina where the company builds its 787 Dreamliner. That's why Nikki Haley was involved in that situation the other day we talked about. When it comes to civil aviation, Boeing has no rivals based in the U.S. Its primary competitor, Airbus, is headquartered in Europe, as you know. Um, so you've got U.S. leadership and government ready to put the finger on the scale for Boeing to try to tip things toward Boeing in terms of sales, in terms of oversight. Um, but none of this is supposed to affect how regulators in the FAA treat Boeing, but in the real world, Boeing obviously wields tremendous power, and more and more we're seeing that power. Meantime, a Virginia Atlantic flight from Manchester to New York was halted. This is moments before it took off. A passenger spotted parts missing from the wing. Oh, God. This is insane. What's going what? on? What? I know. What are they missing? Rivets or bolts? Exactly. My bad. I'm sorry. A passenger spotted faulty bolts on the plane's wing. This terrifying incident comes less than two weeks after a Virgin plane had to make an emergency landing in Manchester after smoke filled the cockpit. What? So, this is a flight to JFK, and it was prevented from taking off at the last minute to Good. give engineers time to do maintenance <laughs> checks. I'm yeah. glad somebody saw it. Right. Wow. You didn't want to think to do those maintenance checks before... <laughs> The passenger spotted it. Uh, uh, look, if ever, to be fair, if every passenger would just inspect a little bit of the plane as they get on, that would relieve a lot of pressure, and those uh, maintenance people could, you know, take a break or work on other stuff, send texts. Thank God for the passenger in 16B. Man. The passenger informed cabin crew on board, and then specialist engineers took a look at the flight was then canceled as a precautionary measure, according to... Virgin Airways. Yeah. And with that, my friends, wait, keep an wait, eye wait, on wait, before before you go, can yeah. I add a, can I add a story? Is that acceptable? Can uh, I do that? That's a bit that unorthodox, against, but against, I suppose I Kim, how are you? All right, sure. Go ahead. This is gonna be a quick one. I just want to show you this. This comes with video, okay? This is apparently some woman gets on a plane and she decides it's an it's an overnight plane. It's like a red eye, right? And she decides that she is going to plug in this neon flashing charger during the overnight plane where people oh are obviously God. trying to sleep. And here's what it looks like. 
Oh Look at my it. God. Flashing, 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 flashing over and over and over again. <laughs> Somebody's upset. People are all upset. They take to uh, the internet to say, this is a six hour flight from Miami to Seattle. This woman has this flashing cable trying to charge her phone on the plane. Everyone in her row and the couple rows, you know, before and after her are pissed off you know they do uh, this to me all the time i don't know what the hell they do it for <laughs> the guy in her row post who does this on a red eye flight who does this um uh, four hours of the six hour flight this cable was flashing on and off and on and off and people were looking around going are you are you seeing this like is this the rudest thing you've ever seen or what users uh, and the thread they put it on reddit did you really they, just do that yeah, they, exactly. Uh, they, but they, I would also they, say they, this. They it, you you know? should be able to hail a flight attendant and the flight attendant should say, hey, this is an overnight flight. I can't have those blinking lights. I mean, I, I mean, honestly, right. that's just so rude, on especially a, on a red yeah. eye. Not even I mean, I would say it's rude no matter what. On well, any it, flight. I don't know if it's rude no matter what. I mean, particularly on an overnight flight where people are trying to sleep yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Right. OK, maybe it's rude anytime. I don't know. Okay. But uh that's yeah. In any I case, it should be, it, 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 yeah, the, the, the yeah. flight attendant should be given the power and, you know, essentially deputized to say, huh, I'm sorry, you got to yeah. unplug that. You can't, it's, you know, if Absolutely. you don't have a charger that, you know, doesn't yeah. flash, then you, know, you can't charge your phone, I guess. That's all. Rude. I'm just, yeah, that is just, you need, you need one of those people who shows up at those, um, you know, the, um, no, no, no. <laughs> Thank you. You need one of them. You know what I mean? One right, of those people who goes, right. let me tell you something. I'm not too good with this. Uh, Someone did this to spoil our Christmas. Thank you. You need one of those people to police the aircraft. God bless America. Um, thank you. The end. Yeah. Wow. Uh, that Stories from the Sky for today. This has been Stories from the Sky. The captain has turned off the seatbelt sign, and you are now free to move about the cabin. Yeah. The Mark Thompson Show. It's time. He comes in on Fridays. You know this guy from the Marina Times. You've seen him lurking around the Bay Area and Los Angeles. He goes back and forth. He comes and goes on a rainbow. How about it? For the amazing Michael Snyder, the culture blaster, everybody. Happy. Happy, happy popcorn day, everybody. I mean, how appropriate. <laughs> I'm coming in here talking about movies, and it's popcorn day. Yeah. You know, I like when you get those big tin barrels or aluminum barrels, sure. and there's like uh, candy corn, sure. and there's cheese corn, and regular old corn, and you can just sit there and, and, and corn yourself into a corn coma. If you're joining us late, it is National Popcorn Day today. Of course, of course. Uh, I, I never felt that popcorn needed a day. Just like, I don't think you need a National Donut Day. I don't think you need like a national chocolate cake day mm. you know you need like national old dog at the shelter day that's yeah. what you know those are the things that need days that's in this so world. sweet you know yeah. i'm uh, lobbying for national unpopped popcorn broken tooth visit your dentist day because <laughs> see, well that's, that's uh, actually yeah. you know that's a problem it, has it been a problem for you in the past happens in the theater I, do I, you I, get a popcorn when you're a theater critic there sitting with the other theater let critics? me just say something and i say it from the heart Okay. The good studios and the good distributors give us a little chip or chit or ticket, chit, 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 uh, that <laughs> enable us, um, uh, chit, give chit, us chit. and we are able to cash them in. Well, I don't, cash isn't the issue, right. uh, for popcorn and a, uh, and a drink. It's like a voucher so you can yes. have the movie experience that many others would. The good studios <laughs> and the good distributors do that. You know who you are, bad studios and bad distributors. <laughs> uh, anyway, wow. it is National Popcorn Day. It's, it's a bit of a big week. I mean, after all that fuss about the Iowa caucus earlier this week, I only have one thing to say, caucus. They don't even know us. <laughs> anyway, oh, my um, God, uh, Michael. How no, dare you? Mark, just so you know uh, what a loyal listener I am and that I was tuned into the first hour today, I heard you guys discussing the Innocence Project. Yes. And I'm proud to announce that I was just named chairman of the Guilt Project. Our yeah. first case, Donald Trump. Wow. There's never been anything this. like this. Very nice. Very good. 
So uh, uh, you want to talk about movies? Michael, working. Are you out of your topical material now? Is that where my chunk? My topical chunk. Your little chunk? topical chunk. Thank you. Oh, yeah. I, I try to make it uh, callbacks. Yes, uh, I like it. You've shown events. that you've listened to the show. Yeah, I, I think there's a lot that recommends it. I'm part of the Mark Thompson family, and I want to say, brother Mark, if yes, I may. Yeah. Uh, and it's early. It's not even February yet, but yeah. I hope that my drop another classic Mark oh, Thompson yeah. time waster is included in this year's Mark's Madness. Albert, let me ask you about that, uh, just because Michael has mentioned this to me off the air. He's concerned that his... Uh, Albert, thank you. Classic, um, this is a classic Mark Thompson time waster drop will not make it because we don't really use it much. Um, yeah, the strength of schedule it. isn't too strong right now. We need <laughs> to uh, use it a little more so people get a something. Yeah, right more. now, yeah. Michael, it's not really in the rotation at all. But whenever, this is classic Mark when, Thompson time waster. Whenever That's it. Mark a, yeah. decides to do one of his Who Wants to Be a Millionaire gigs, this thing should be pulled out. This well, is a classic to... Mark Thompson time waster. Yeah, I don't know, Michael. Maybe. I I. I, I I appreciate that you want to be in Mark's Madness, but I don't know if that's what you need. This is a classic to... Mark Thompson time waste. Hey, Maybe dude, it's, okay. it's no chit chit chit. I know that. I know that. <laughs> All right, right, well, right. As, long as, as long as you understand your place in the world. This is a classic to... Mark Thompson time waste. All right, uh, Michael. We'll, well, is, we will take a meeting on it. It is truly one of the lesser Liam Neeson impressions as well. Hmm. Um, all right, so let's talk about movies. And this is not a very, very big week. Again, it's January. It's the dead zone uh, when it comes to releasing uh, new films. Uh, some prestige things that didn't get wide release in December when they were put out for awards consideration are coming out, and okay. our first movie is one of those, although it didn't, uh, it, you know, it did get some acknowledgement, but uh, it, I think it's worth checking out, and let's lead with it. Uh, written and directed by Ava DuVernay, uh, mm. Origin is a docudrama based on the nonfiction bestseller Cast, The Origins of Our Discontents by Isabel Wilkerson. Uh, which addresses the scourge of racism in the U.S., its source, its reasons, um, uh, as an element of a caste system that's been in place since slavery days and before. And it, it's a powerful book, and this is a fascinating attempt to bring the book in some form to the screen. Origin is also about, Origin the movie, is also about Wilkerson's personal odyssey as she tries to overcome losses in her life, and cope with the uh, tragedy of Trayvon Martin's senseless murder by traveling to various crucial locations in the world, Delhi and Berlin in particular, and researching her theories for the book. Uh, and, you know, caste systems are a major part of Indian society. Um, in Berlin, it turns out that uh, Jim Crow laws were... Um, underpinning some of the treatment of the Jews by the Nazis. They sure. looked at those Jim Crow laws in the States as um, models for how they might deal with the population. Oh, interesting. Okay. Uh, and it, it's... Uh, so, I'm sorry, this is a drama or this is a documentary? It's a docudrama. Okay. And it's done by Ava DuVernay. It's based on the book, but it also incorporates elements of the author's life, which are, of course, uh, addressed in the book as well. So uh, she's researching her theories for the book and folding in those aspects of Wilkerson's life and her work. The movie is a thought-provoking drama of ideas and exploration. It can get a little dry now and then in its devotion to Wilkerson's thesis, and it is literally all over the map as she does all this traveling, but it carries you along on the protagonist's journey and her uh, dauntless pursuit of truth and understanding is ultimately so uplifting. And uh, ingenue Ellis Taylor as Isabel Wil uh, Wilkerson is so honest and passionate in her performance that you can't help but be moved. Um, it counts as a bounce back, as far as I'm concerned, for DuVernay, who scored big with Selma, her 2014 biopic oh, sure, about Martin Luther King Jr., yeah but missed the target big time with uh, what was a highly anticipated 2018 adaptation of the well-loved fantasy novel, A Wrinkle in Time, which was neither a critical nor commercial success. And I'm talking about the, the movie, not the book. Ingenue is a ding word. No, uh, oh, that's her I'm name. sorry, Dauntless is a ding word. No, yeah, Ingenue is her name. Oh, then I will have to remove the Can ding. You do you have like a reverse ding? 
Oh, we don't, but uh, My it will bad. be taken off. I'm sorry. It so will be, thank you. It will be taken off the board. He is so quick on the trigger. Several people, though, mentioned it. That's why I had to. Uh, well, uh, they, you know. Didn't it know sounds it was... good, says Gordon. Uh, it, this, yeah, you oh, really yeah. like this. It's like I'm referring to her as that ingenue Ellis Taylor. No, yeah. her name is ingenue. I get it. Ellis Taylor. Scourge is a ding word, says Tom. Sure. Uh, yeah, well, despite the occasional heavy handedness and the difficulty of creating a coherent picture out of Wilkerson's relationships, uh, her travels and her scholarly insights, you know, as a whole, mm-hmm. uh, it feels a little scattershot, but Origin finds Duvernay rediscovering her mojo. Uh, Ellis is wonderful, and she's complimented, uh, complimented by a, a formidable cast, including John Bernthal as Wilkerson's loving and devoted husband, a white man, by the way, as well as Vera Farmiga, Audra McDonald, wow. E.C. Nash Betts, Nick Offerman, Connie Nielsen, wow. and Blair Underwood in significant supporting roles. That is some serious acting power uh, unleashed in the service of what I think is an important movie. And uh, it's almost... And, and, and a good movie. It's good, yeah. It, it Again, it goes in so many different directions. It's hard to, um, it's hard to follow... Uh, her sensibility, what she meant in terms of the filmmaking, but it, ultimately it just felt like something that I, you know, it wasn't like the castor oil situation where you take something because it's good for you. No, no, that's why, I'm, that's why I make the point. It's not just an uh, important movie. I think it's an important movie, but it's a good movie it's too. A good it's movie. a good watch. Yeah. So in a perfect world, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but just to ask you as a kind of last question, sure. you would have your note would be, I wish there was more coherence to the direction. There is that- so, so much that she tries to do here I in see. terms of telling Wilkerson's personal story. I, I, I suppose the book does that. I've not read the book. I'm but, sure the book does that. Yeah, yeah. And, and pulls it all together. So on the just screen. just can't do that on, on, it, on not screen. Not to yeah. the extent that you can do it on a book where you can kind of ruminate as you read. You can stop ruminate. and go back. Anyway. Yeah. What's uh, next? Yes, that's in theaters just so as you know. Okay. Um, next on the docket, well, you know, it's January. And because it's January, I didn't expect much from an unheralded science fiction flick. But damned if ISS isn't a pretty solid thriller Wow! set in a claustrophobic environment, that of the International Space Station, where detente in the form of a six-person crew, three Americans and three Russians, reigns over all. So the sextet are there to work together for scientific advancement until something really bad happens thousands of miles below the oh, surface of the Oh, I love this the co- uh, sextet. You're right, is it? Oh, uh, really wow. Really numerical description. Oh, okay. I'm anyway, loving this. Down on, on Earth, bad things start happening, and the two ground control stations, one for each country, send orders to their citizens in orbit to each take control of the ISS. Oh, my God. So I in, love this in concept. So, in some ways, it reflects what's been happening sure. internationally between Russia and America, who have I, done this. I've always wondered how they get along up there, given all of the strife that between the two countries. I got on... one word for you. Vodka. Well. <laughs> no, I don't know. Interstellar vodka. So Ariana DeBose, Oscar winner for Spielberg's West Side Story remake. Yeah. Chris Messina, a, a pretty wonderful uh, uh, actor and John Gallagher Jr. also uh, a good actor, They're like kind of character actors, but Messina has a little bit of the lead to him. Uh, they uh, play the U.S. contingent, and they're probably the most recognizable performers here. But the trio playing the Ruskies acquit themselves admirably. Um, you may have a good idea where this is going, by the way. At now, do they speak extent. Russian, or is everybody speaking English? English and Russian, back and forth. And the uh, so uh, it language, feels very authentic. The language barrier, to some extent, becomes an issue because not. Every one of the Americans understands oh, that's Russian cr- perfectly. This is, I can't wait to and see this. Not every one of the Russians understands American, but maybe that's a, a red herring. I just oh, say. That's, this is really great. Where well, can I see this? It's, uh, it's I need in, to see this right now. No, I can't even listen to the rest of your no, segment. No, it's in theaters, and it's it's not a great movie. Oh, it's it's just okay. really fun, good, and I think you'll be terribly entertained by it. And remember, you've got, like, you know, DeBose is a wonderful actress, and even if you know where it's going, getting there is tense fun. And the special effects in the uh, expectedly claustrophobic confines of the space station, looking out the ISS window down to Earth where something bad is happening. Uh, And during any extravehicular activity are definitely up to snuff. And the direction by Gabriella Calperthwaite enlivens Nick Schaefer's okay script. If there's anything that's 
you know, to, to be chided. It's like the script is not great, but it's pretty, pretty the solid. Great cons are chided as a dingler. You know, you may buy into SSS because of the cast and their commitment to the premise and the predicament the characters face. It's, I was entertained and it's in theaters. And this is the sort of thing I think that you're going to want to wait for. And then one weekend night, you and Courtney will kick back and watch this thing. I'm excited. I'm excited. Well, don't go berserk. Uh, all right. Now, no. um, <clears throat> let's get to a third and final movie yes, for today. And it's, you know, the kind of movie you roll, you roll your eyes at me covering because, yeah, it's made by foreigners. And I know right. you, you want to buy American. I'm an American. Mark. I want something with subtitles and guns. That's what America's about. Uh, without subtitles and lots of guns. Well, this has subtitles and guns. Mm. So I don't know. It's it, We're halfway there. So uh, we'll return to docudrama. Yeah, without subtitles, exactly. Or historical drama, to be yes. more precise. Go the ahead. Settler is a, a potent and revelatory movie about revelatory is genocidal activities in the country of Chile wow. at the start of the 20th century when wealthy aristocrats were methodically trying to exterminate the indigenous people and gobble up all of their land and resources. Wow. So, so it's hear... like uh, uh, Killers of the Flower, Flower moon. moon in its way. In its own they way. Are, they are sister uh, films, I think, in, in terms of their... Uh, stories and what their uh, protagonists are, are up to. So our entree into the situation is an expedition by a maverick British army officer, an American mercenary, and a native Chilean who is an ace marksman. So they, this trio, are hired by a rich, well-connected landowner who wants to keep control of his massive acres of property, which means getting rid of the locals by any means necessary. Oh. So The Settlers is a beautifully shot uh, and disturbing film that addresses issues that we continue to confront today in various corners of the globe and in our bar, uh, our backyard as well. Sure. I, um, although it has the feel of a Western, uh, you know, these guys are on horseback trotting around the Chilean countryside. It's takedown of colonialism, European racism, and unbridled capitalism give it deeper dimensions than a simple horse opera. So The Settlers is an impressive directorial debut by the movie's co-screenwriter, uh, Philippe uh, galvez Haberle. For those yeah. of you who need to know, Mark, it's in English and with the aid of subtitles on screen, it's also in Spanish and the language of the indigenous people. Well, puedo hablar español entonces. No, I, no va a haber un problema. There's not going to be a problem with me. Okay. I'm glad to hear that. I actually uh, can't under I, I can speak it, but I really can't understand it very well. It's my issue. It's in select theaters. I'm really looking forward to it, though. And, and it's true. I think it was pointed out in the chat. I just glanced at it uh, that this is a story from all around the world. I mean, essentially, the, um, the colonialization of various places all over the world was going on since the beginning of time. Here it is. I think it's Maude who said this. Yeah. Well, uh, kind of like all over the planet, one yeah. horror story at a time. I think that's exactly right. right. I mean, and yeah. right now it's playing out so um, publicly in the Middle East, sure. particularly uh, the Israeli-Hamas conflict. Absolutely right. And the, uh, a, uh, I mean, you know, but uh, I've just come back from, in fact, Chile. I mean, you know, why uh, this is the, why this is, a, I think, uh, interesting and probably painful look that, uh, you know, why do they speak Spanish all over Latin America? Because, well, because the Spanish went there and they they took over. Spain and, colonized them. Yeah, that's why they speak Spanish. So there's no again, other reason. It's it's it covers those issues. It's a very it's very beautiful to look at and also very troubling because of the uh, story that that seems never ending. Where is it in theaters or where is it? It is in select theaters. All and right, again, so. all three of these movies are going to be good for home viewing. It's not all that necessary to see them on the big screen, unless we're talking that big LED screen you have in your uh, in yeah. your uh, den. Mark. I want to ask you of uh, quickly as we run out of time about one TV offering. Oh, I have a plethora of them that we uh, will no. zip through. Plethora but is ahead. great, but I, yeah, we, just in case we don't zip through everything, yeah. I'd wonder about. Uh, Monsieur Spade. The, okay, so we, uh, okay. We, we previewed it last week. Okay, I can you preview it a little bit it. more for me? I will absolutely preview uh, a little more of it. Tell everybody Mis again, that's Clive Owen? It, it, now, Monsieur Spade is on AMC and AMC Plus, and they're going to dribble it out. 
uh, episode by episode, I guess on Sundays maybe, and it stars the fine British actor Clive Owen as Detective Sam Spade, the hero of Dashiell Hammett's novel set in our beautiful San Francisco. Mm -hmm. And in this um, extrapolation of his story, yeah. um, Sam Spade, played by Owen, has hit 60, and he decides to move to the south of France. And once he gets there, obviously... Um, a man of his uh, reputation and repute will find himself in circumstances that require uh, his brawn, his brain, his skill. Special uh, set of skills. A special set of skills <laughs> okay. that Sam Spade, even at 60, has. Mm -hmm. And uh, in this case, uh, there are mysteries to un uh, uncover, and it's uh, shot uh, in you know fine... Uh, location form so you're in France with uh, Sam Spade and the locals uh, are not that wild about a, a guy of his nature and what's really interesting about the story is that he finds himself uh, a landowner by marriage and um, he becomes a part of the community like it or not and when uh, trouble comes a call in, Sam Spade is caught in the middle of it. I oh. really enjoyed it a lot. All right. Episode one, uh, it, it drew me in. If you like that sort of thing, the contemporary equivalent of Dashiell Hammett on some level is the great author Harlan Coben, who has become a little industry of himself. Sure. Uh, his movie, Tell, uh, his book, Tell No One, was made into a terrific French movie. I highly recommend seeking out Tell No One, the uh, French film based on Harlan Coben's novels, but he's also converted a bunch of his novels into episodic TV miniseries. So um, Stay Close and Shelter and The Stranger, all of which have been on Netflix, are must-watches, and so is his latest, which is uh, available right now on Netflix, Fool Me Once. And the premise is a, a, a very attractive woman who was a member of the British military and stationed in Afghanistan uh, is also a mother and a wife. Uh, her sister dies, and she comes home to deal with it, and in front of her very eyes, her husband is shot. And we seem to uh, be starting out with this massive tragedy, and the question is, who killed the husband, and is it related to the sister's death as well? Mm -hmm. This stuff is uh, wow. really engaging from the get-go. Michael likes Fool Me Once. Masterful, masterful. Uh, story guy uh, has uh, come up with another really great series and it, his production company has a deal with Netflix and it's fine because the work has been great. Yeah, the Harlan Coben stuff is really, really good. Criminal Record on Apple TV uh, is also a recommendation with slow horses on hiatus until its fourth season. Uh, I am on board a new UK police procedural mystery set in London with the great Peter Capaldi who was uh, the doctor on Doctor Who, or one of them, who is the star of the hilarious political satire, The Thick of It, and is in fine form here as a veteran detective with a few secrets that may very well be exposed by a crusading, young, up-and-coming detective on the force, played by Kush Jumbo, who is uh, familiar to American audiences for The Good Wife and The Good Fight. And she is currently, Doctor Who fan, she's currently playing Lady Macbeth opposite David Tennant, one of the big Doctor Who stars uh, who's playing Macbeth on the West End in London right now. Look at you at and, the West End up there. Yeah, you know, got to do it. Anyway, Criminal Record is, uh, I guess, just aired its third episode via Apple TV, and I am hooked. And I'm loving it, Michael. I, I want to throw in one more. Well, I, I'm. we're really running late. I love it, though. Go for okay, it. Okay, uh, we have a minute. Ted, a prequel <laughs> to the Ted movies. Don't tell me when we have a minute. Ted I'm is on Hulu. Most of this show. Hey, come on. I'm watching the clock. Ted is... Uh, yeah. Ted so, is... So the Ted movies were about uh, the relationship between uh, Seth foul McFarlane's foul-mouthed, drug-abusing, Boston-area teddy bear come to life and the boy who wished him into existence. And Mark... Uh, They're promoting know, the hell out of this. You like it? Uh, yeah. The, the series is much better than the, the sequel, Ted 2, but... Um, Mark Wahlberg plays this character, John Bennett, in the original movie, and he's obviously a grown man, and he's with this teddy bear who he's got a, almost a lifelong relationship with. This is the prequel uh, with Max Burkholder as the teenage version a version of Wahlberg's character, Scott Grimes and uh, Alana Ubach as uh, John's loudish dad and frazzled mom, and McFarlane, of course, voicing Ted. 
It is occasionally lowbrow, like McFarlane's animated sitcom stuff. In fact, you can hear echoes of Family Guy dad Peter Griffin in McFarlane's Ted voice, but I laughed out loud a few times each episode. And I want to also point out that our longtime pal, the wonderfully incisive comedian, writer, and actor Dana Gould is a creative consultant for the show, mm -hmm. wrote at least one very funny episode and also appeared in it. So I'm on board with you Ted. You like Ted. Uh, yeah, I did. I and did. Uh, is it uh, available for binging or you have yeah, to watch yeah, it? Yeah, just... on, it's on Hulu. Uh, oh, just... it's on, I thought it's Peacock. No, no, it's on Hulu. It says Peacock event series January 11th. It's on 11th. Peacock. Yeah, thank Isn't you. Isn't Peacock Hulu? Aren't no, they all together not. in all one All right, so big... let's quickly talk right. about Ted. He loves it. He says yeah, there's some laugh-out-loud moments like Family Guy, a couple of cringe moments too, kind of lowbrow stuff, but he enjoys it. Monsieur Spade, having seen the first episode, he really likes this Clive Owen portrayal of Sam Spade has moved to the south of France, and he's drawn back in to something that he is uniquely perhaps equipped to handle criminal record is the uk police procedural with peter capaldi the veteran detective with secrets possibly exposed by kush jumbo and fool me once is on netflix beautiful woman her sister dies she's drawn back to handle that and then her husband is shot in front of her is it related to her sister's death that, again, on Netflix. He liked all of those offerings for your streaming pleasure. Now to the big screen. The Settlers takes place in Chile, where wealthy aristocrats are trying to wipe out the native peoples. It's in Spanish with English subtitles and some English, too, you said, right? Yeah, English with no subtitles. <laughs> Oh, it's English with no subtitles. Yeah, you won't need the subtitles when the English comes on. <laughs> but there is Spanish with subtitles also. Oh, yeah, also. and for the okay. indigenous language, too, which is not precisely Spanish, Mark. Okay, no, I get it. <laughs> okay, thank you. Anyway, he likes uh, the settlers. Yeah, I did. Uh, ISS. It's the one I can't wait to it's see. It's fun. It's a fun sci-fi offering set in the space station. A with thriller. The Russians and the Americans, and then a conflict and tensions between the two countries russia and america how do the people on board the international space station handle those tensions vodka ariana dubose is in this one and it is in theaters and finally michael told us about origin the ava duvernay offering based on casts which is the book and it's a docudrama Michael liked it very much, thinks it's a good movie and also an important movie. It is in theaters. Wow. What a ride you've taken us on, Michael well, Snyder. and a lot of positive feedback by the culture blaster. I, I yeah. you know, I'm seldom this enthusiastic about things. And again, yeah. there's I'm never not, been anything like I'm this. Not over like the you moon haven't really, about, yeah. Not over the moon about those movies, but they're right. good. Yeah. Of kind. Right. Well, I, um... I'm excited about what it. What can you tell us about the scene? Hey, he's oh, not over God. the moon, Larry, but he likes most of the offerings. I am right now focused on one thing and one thing only. 5.30 tomorrow yeah. at Levi Stadium, the Niners take on the Green it's Bay It's going Packers. to be wet. The Niners are favored by nine and a half. <laughs> that seems like a lot of points. But I've talked to people who go, no, Niners are going to blow them out. They've got a running game. They've got a lot of things that the Cowboys didn't have. Right. Uh, as a matter of fact, Green Bay, not particularly great against the run. And we have a run stopper back, the um, gentle mountain of a man, Eric Armstead. I'm glad to see him back on the line this, uh, this coming Saturday evening. I'm glad to see you back on the line. You can find him in the Marina, Marina Times and here on Fridays. He comes and goes on a rainbow. Michael Snyder, Culture Blaster. Niners. I'll, uh, I'll miss Michael until next week. The Mark Thompson Show. I don't know what to do, Albert and Kim. This is a uh, terrific show. I wish I could just bottle this show and uh, serve it up every day. I thought it was pretty good. We had some real hero stuff through. Start with the Culture Blaster. Then you had Michael Shore, you had John Daly, you had a great Florida offering and included Crocs. Mm -hmm. Albert apologized to everyone for not getting the podcast done. Albert, thank you. My bad. But he, I'm sorry. He did also tweet, though, so you got to give him credit for that. And uh, we talked about the Niners in sports a bit. Kim 
having soloed Nikki's show, slid right in. She had the update on the Scott Peterson thing. Yeah. She also had that addition to Stories from the Sky. Everything. You know, I think her annual review will be filled with all kinds of terrific stuff. So she's going over to the After Party Live, so we'll uh, head over there with her. And I'm Shadow Stevens for the Mark Johnson Show. Bye-bye. I'll just be a viewer, but I'm looking forward to the After Party Live. We'll do it live. Bye-bye. We'll do it live. Till Monday, everybody. Go Niners. Bye-bye.